This is the video you have been asking about. As part of a fact-finding mission, we tested 10 betting companies, call them softbooks if you prefer, with one sole purpose. How much can you win before they limit you? The experiment period took us 12 weeks. We could have probably extracted more if we took a little bit longer, but by then the accounts were fairly limited. I'm Tony from Beth Analyst. Let's crack on with this. So we called this bookmaker experiment. Professional gambler test 10 bookmakers. So for the first thing we need to discuss is the rules of combat. We used five people for this and each of them had the same 10 betting accounts. That's a total of 50 accounts. All are UK based. We did that for parity purpose, so you know the comparison was very similar. Now, there was no previous experience with betting from any of these uh, people, so they didn't have any accounts as such with these bookmakers in the past. All were legal with KYC documents ready, so if necessary, you know, when it comes to payment, they can get it. Each prepared for any bookmaker call. You know, we sort of uh, coached them what could possibly come that the bookmaker could call. And if they did, just be prepared. Say you was in a meeting or say, you know, can you make it quick? Yes. And they played until there was limited. When I say limited, in some cases it was down to like uh, five pounds. Some cases it was uh, totally dead. And in other cases, you might have got uh, 10 or 20 still on. Yes. And not all the, the bets were the same. So the five candidates, just to sort of explain this to you a little bit, right? One is a business advisor that, that I've known for a long time. I mean, maybe from my university days, whatever, right? Uh, and um, yeah, so he's number one. Number two is a city trader. Number three is a mechanic uh, that I know from my uh, school days. And number four, I would class him as a restaurant manager. I don't know whether he is, but uh, it's, it's pretty high up in the chain there. And uh, the last one is uh, a female um, business owner in the IT business uh, world. So she, she's pretty well clued in, yeah. Um, I wanted at least one to be female just to sort of see if there's any kind of uh, difference in attitude or if it was sort of logged that they thought that you were like buying in accounts, etc. Right. So let's discuss the process that how we, how we conducted this. The first thing is, right, all bets were placed from their own IP. So we used like TeamViewer to log into the computers or maybe, you know, uh, using the mobile data if necessary. Uh, but uh, the bets were placed from own IP. So there was no kind of uh, tracking and tracing us. Yeah. The deposits were from their own bank accounts or maybe from their cards, uh, deposit cards, etc. Uh, but, uh, you know, again, it all came from the proper bet uh, proper account, yeah? Uh, several colleagues helped us place these bets. Now, as you see, we've not been overly aggressive with the betting, so, you know, uh, but uh, it was just, they were just like stocking fillers, you know, where we sort of uh, had a bit of time, maybe somebody went and put a couple of bets on for us and things like this, yeah? Right. We avoided long periods on the bookmaker's website, so when we was logged in, you know, it was all happening. The bet types included value, our own opinion, some racing bets to get the margins up a little bit, uh, sp sports betting, obviously, and in-play bets. The stakes, we would class them as relatively low, but that's mainly because we're used to sort of uh, betting in Asia where the limits are a little bit different, eh? And some include small bookmaker bonuses, and that's about all you need to know. The 10 sports books are as listed. Bet365, William Hill, Marathon Bet, Bet Fred, Ladbrooks, VC Bet, Sky Bet, 888 Sport, Paddy Power, and Unibet. So I just want to give you a quick update on, you know, the results and comments, what, what happened, yes? Uh, the first thing I want to mention is if I've tapped in one of these numbers wrong on this uh, presentation, yeah, please do forgive me, but I don't think I did, but uh, you never know. Right. Um, so this is a brief explanation on each bookmaker 
to everything that we've done yes stop the video go back on it later have a look at the numbers see what you think um you can you know figure it out over within your own time so to say yeah the rating is based on this experience right we was only out for one reason and that was to test these limits until we sort of got cut off yeah if we did the same thing again i can guarantee you the results would be different even if we followed the same procedure because i just don't basically believe that uh, there's like one rule fits all and the numbers are rounded you know for convenience sake yeah right so we'll discuss the first one in a bit more sort of detail to show you how we've uh, done these charts because the, we'll, we'll fly through the other 10 but uh, uh so bet 365 right they literally finished uh, top yes and you can see the profit for a b c d and e and the total profit so we got 5707 pounds out of them from five different betting accounts right you can see the deposit levels right they accepted uh, reasonable uh, sums uh, we didn't luckily uh, we didn't need to refresh most of them right so you know the deposits were depending on what we thought how they would see the person or what they made available to us because they were paying this from their own account yeah the number of bets made uh, as you can see this is the total number of uh, bets that we made some of them to be quite honest with you we'd already been limited maybe in half um, but you know you can see it gives you some idea of how many bets we could have played 715 over that period yeah and uh, the amount of days that we played on each account so you can see you know some of them were finished pretty quick some of them took a lot longer it uh, depends the other thing i want to explain to you is this rating this bet 365 rating b minus you know for us they're all a load of piss anyway but uh, at the same time you know we've got to try to put this in some kind of uh, uh, format so we give them a b minus rating because they were the best of the leisure bookmakers that we actually bet with or they had the best results so you can see we staked a total of 62,741 the average stake was 88.75 and the total profit on that was 5707 that comes out uh, to about 9.1 percent you know on the total uh, stakes uh, the profit yeah um they were often uh, the best odds on horse racing most profits though came from in play betting funny enough with these uh, bookmakers they make a hell of a lot of mistakes on the in play markets you can jump on there you can even get uh, margins uh, 12 15 percent it just depends um we could have done better if we spent a bit more time on it don't forget like i said we, we didn't over indulge we we had to use our free time to to make these bets yeah so the second one is William Mill. Like I said, you can stop this, go through the profit chart again. You can see that we had a total of 5,033 5, in profit. Uh, the deposits were all accepted. Um, and uh, yeah, the number of beds, the number of days, etc. Yeah. Uh, with William Mill, we gave them a, a rating of C because the total stakes were 66,166, which we found i'm not saying it's fair enough because you know they're all pretty dodgy in any case but um, they were one of the better ones in this situation yet yeah, so the average take was 84.72 that's down to us i guess i guess we picked some sort of numbers if we thought we were betting bigger leagues we put a bit more on them and so on the tennis season was still actually playing at the time so we did use a lot of tennis bets because william will make a lot of mistakes on tennis um the total profit uh, was 5033 that's 7.61 percent uh, the best thoughts like i said it was on tennis um for racing they're actually one of the better bookmakers um i don't know how that's going to change now that they've been acquired by 888 sport now this one's going to surprise a few because uh, they do have uh, strong limitations right uh, marathon bed as you can see if you look at the number of bets that we made it's significantly less than with the other bookmakers yeah but um you know on top league sports even in in play betting on top leagues you could bet quite substantial and because they've got such good odds it was easy to crave uh, to to you know gauge an, uh, an opportunity there and uh, take advantage 
But uh, yeah, I mean, we did deposit a little bit higher sums with them because we knew that we wanted to be a little bit more sort of aggressive, yeah? So Marathon Bet, we gave them also a C rating, which takes a total of 72,140. You see, the average stake is 215.34. Now, some people say Marathon Bet don't take anything. Now, it's true on races, you'd be lucky to get 70, 80 quid sometimes, and the smallish odds delay to 500 or something. But um, anyway, uh, the total profit was uh, 4367, which is just 6.03%. But again, it's not bad, actually, if you consider that we were betting mainly sort of top leagues, yeah, and US sport, yeah. So uh, there was 0% uh, margin bets offered, and uh, we took advantage whenever we thought we had an opportunity. Uh, we stuck with football, like I say, US sport, and we bet a little bit more aggressive with marathon bet. Next was uh, Betfred. This is pretty much uh, the same as the sort of first two mentioned. They will take a number of bets. Um, not as bad as actually um, I had anticipated. Um, as you can see, they took a reasonable amount of bets. Uh, the sort of you know warning came pretty early from them that uh, we weren't getting any bonuses, we weren't getting any best odds guaranteed, etc., etc. But we sort of expected that. To be honest with you, we exploited Betfred a little bit uh, uh, more than we should have, and by that I mean that we probably used all rating more than you know is not is normal. Yeah. So the total stakes was just thirty six thousand with them. Uh, 36,193 the average stake was then obviously reduced to 69.47 but like I say we can explain that by the big odds with the horse racing you know we didn't want to sort of take anything to sort of win more than 500 we did it one well, maybe with 1100 but uh, so on uh, the total profit was uh, 3,754 which is uh, represents 10.37% uh, again with racing you know our uh, typical margin when we're betting with the uh, betting shops is uh, nearer 18 percent so um you can see you know with the football in it sort of balances out yeah uh, the value was in the race in the football we stakes a little bit higher uh, some football leagues as far as the odds were concerned was okay and we gave uh, betfred a c minus rating again being very generous of course uh, Ladbrokes used to be absolutely the best bookmaker in the UK, but unfortunately, that was a long time ago, gone downhill big time since. Uh, pff, they seem to run scared of anything. Uh, we managed to get uh, 362 bets on, as you can see. Uh, the total profit was less, uh, 3669. And yeah, I mean, okay, we did drag it out for a while with them. As you can see, you know, we averaging maybe one or two bets a day. It's, it's nothing extreme from one account, yeah? So there you go. So there it is with that. Look, Brooks, we give rating of D because they only took uh, 28,236. They limited very quickly. Average stake was 78. Uh, the total profit was 3669. Okay, we had a pretty good margin that could have sort of explained one of the reasons why um, we got closed a little bit faster. Yeah, they're no longer sharp on racing. You can take advantage. And also, if you're looking for a little bit of a secret here, look at US sports like uh, college football and uh, especially like the player markets in um, you know basketball and things like this. Yeah, right. No courage. This is a company that's going downhill. Rating D is more than fair. Right. The next is uh, VC bet, uh, Victor Chandler, right? Um, I don't wish to say this, but he's always been a bit of a pussy. He was okay when he was like a lane 64 and a two to one shot with like 40 grand, but anybody can do that trick. And the moral of the story is, yeah, you can see the accounts. If you look at the days, they got closed pretty quick, even though we sort of kept C open uh, quite a long time, uh, mainly because we placed one better day, I guess. We was a lot more aggressive on uh, uh, customer A, I don't know why, which is probably open an account and uh, it is it, 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 it uh, during a day. So there was like no sort of consistency from our side. You know, we were trying to keep time on uh, one IP to a, a limit, but maybe we played more bets than we should have. <laughs> uh, who knows? Um, the moral of the story is with Victor is that uh, the ratings, the total stakes were less than 27,000. The average stake was uh, 80, exactly, funny enough. Uh, the total profit was uh, 3272, 11.3%. Um, top league football helped us. They have some pretty good odds in there and they make a lot of in play mistakes. Yeah, we did better than we expected with VC Bear, but they're still a, p a pathetic lot. 
So Skybet, we get a lot of complaints about Skybet. Um, we've had sort of different feelings with them. As you can see, B took uh, 1115 off of them uh, from 122 bets over 63 days. It probably wasn't that much if you think about it, yeah. But we managed to get on 315 bets. We sort of did drag it out for a while. Um, the facet with the uh, sky bet is that um, you know we did manage to get 11.99 percent and we did have a, a, to be honest with you we did cheat a little bit we sort of went for the French race in which we know that UK bookmakers don't have a fucking clue about excuse my language uh, it's like uh, uh, you know taking sweets from a candy shop is really easy um, they're nothing special they let us play racing more than we expected so fair play uh, definitely have accounts with a sky bet if I can get hold of a few, but um, yeah, uh, a rating D is probably being fair enough. So next up is one of the companies that we absolutely detest, 888 Sport. As you know, they've just taken over William Hill. We even had a, a minus on one of the accounts here. Look at that, uh, account A, minus 170, yeah? It's incredible, and we was literally closed with the minus 170. We could do nothing about it, yeah. Uh, even E, uh, 72, and literally closed after nine bets, yeah, 12 days. It's pretty pathetic stuff. Yeah, call it what you will. So we managed to stake a total of 10,856. Average stake was uh, 92. The total profit, 13.14. We couldn't help ourselves. We had to take uh, the racing odds there. They always, they have often the best, but uh, I think it's just to see who's going to pick it up and then uh, throw you out. I don't understand it, right? If they're paying um, affiliates uh, CPA to get uh, clients there and then they treat them like this is ridiculous, yeah? They stopped incentives incredibly fast, sometimes after two or three bets. It was just amazing, right? Absolutely useless, this company. A rating E, that's the lowest we're going to go, right? But but uh, if we had, uh, if we went all the way down to rating Z, they would have a Z minus. Paddy Power, I don't know what to say about Paddy Power. It's always been a pathetic bookmaker, in my opinion. You know, they can advertise with a big mouth. They're the Ryanair of uh, betting, I guess. Um, even though Ryanair, I guess, offer value, these people offer nothing except for that. They have the Betfair Exchange, which you can get like down to a couple of percent. But um, as you can see, 109 bets over five accounts. Close, close, close. We had one at minus 180 and you got close. Yeah. Uh, okay. The the B, I must tell you, um, did um, when they opened the account, went straight in on the 10 to 1 winner with the horse racing. And so that sort of explains that, you know. It's, uh, it, it's probably an exaggeration. Um, pretty pathetic uh, bookmaker. Uh, they know it. We know it. Everybody should know it. Uh, you know, these people just need to stay away from um you can see we've got 11.98 percent um stopped quickly uh winnings from one race basically crap learn nothing new we already knew they were crap and they just basically confirmed that yeah so the last one on the list if i remember right is uh, unibet right well we had profits on every account but uh, basically enough to buy you know a cup of coffee at the corner shop and uh, that's about it uh, the biggest thing we got was 412 from one account over 29 bets uh, we must have got them with an early one that's all i can say um yeah stakes total of 12580 the average stake was 85 the total profit 8.22 percent if that makes sense we tried every trick didn't work uh, stuck with the value or it's one messed up company there's nothing more to say about it yeah so in summary, let's just give a quick, uh, you know, our thought process on this, yeah? We could have done a little bit better, say if we took maybe four or five months, take a, a longer term view. Uh, some accounts could still be utilized a little bit. We, you know, they're, they're still open. Uh, we could have probably taken another couple of thousand with a bit of effort from all of them put together, but uh, it's not worth it. It's a waste of time at that stage. Yeah. Uh, we had no issue with payout. We haven't taken money from every account until now, or should I say uh, our people haven't uh, taken money from every account, but uh, they're prepared and uh, it doesn't seem to be any sort of issues with that at least, yeah? 
Um, I just also want to mention to you, if you could get a Bet365 account uh, properly, you know, you can hit it for 5 to 20k, but you've got to be really clever. You've got to really play the long-term game. You've got to look like a mug for a while. You've got to play your Yankees. You've got to play stupid bets. Go and do a couple of quid on the lottery. Uh, just l be happy to lose a couple of hundred and then just hope that they sort of bought it and, you know, raised your limits and then you can have a real bash at them. Um, some accounts, if you get them up to VIP status, you could even get more. But, um, yeah, you know, 5 to 20k seems to be a reasonable sum, yeah. Uh, we did have a, a William Mill VIP account over the same period. This was a guy that had lost a lot of money with them. And uh, we basically uh, uh, have so far, I mean, it's still open, uh, taken 42975 from it. We're doing this on a split basis with the guy. So uh, that's pretty fair. Um, we don't know what's going to happen with it. So we we'll sort of keep you updated on that at a later stage. Yes. And we're also going to do another video about uh, extracting tips in another video. Yeah, extraction tips, should I say. That's show you how to probably get a little bit more out of these bookmakers, how to get a bit more longevity into your accounts, etc. Yeah, but that will come at a later date. Uh, hopefully, that's about it for now. That's the boot camp for today. So thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Get in touch for, you know, one-to-one -one coaching. You know what that's all about. We've discussed it in another video. Yes. And uh, yeah, you'll find us at uh, bettinganalyst.com. So visit the site and uh, we'll see you soon. Take care for now. Bye-bye.